So our main job today is to be able to read the problem and figure out how to turn it into a math problem instead of an English problem. The good news is, um, well, I guess two things are good news. Uh, a calculator will be required and provided. Um, so for these, you won't, you know, you'll have a calculator. And we will, we will give you the formulas. Um, I think it's four. Yeah. And if you look on the worksheet, it looks a lot. The test looks a lot like this. We're going to give you the four formulas at the top, and so we'll give you the formulas you need. But you'll have to be able to pick out well, you know, which one do I use? So it's kind of a halfway point of just saying here, use this formula, versus on the other end here, memorize everything. So in the middle is here are the formulas. Can you figure out where they go? So part of this will be me explaining how to know when to use each one, and that's really not a hard thing to figure out. We'll be, we'll be fine on picking the right one. All right, we'll be using four formulas for these problems. Uh, here's some of the variables, what they mean. So A is the, the final amount, A for amount. Uh, A is also, like this isn't the official word, but I like to call it the after. A for after. P is the principal, which is the beginning amount. But a better word that starts with P, that means the before amount. What English prefix do you know that starts with P and means before? Pre. So that's not officially what P stands for, but I think that's an easier one to remember. So the P is the pre the before, and the A is the after. T is time, R is rate, although you know this, but don't forget it while you're working problem. Make sure that you do the percent to decimal thing, right? Move it two decimal places. A couple of examples, 5% is 0 0.05, 0.25% is 0 0.0025. You've done this before, the percent to decimal thing. So do those two real quick. What's? Don't call it out loud. Just write it down. What's 3.7% as a decimal? And what's 11% as a decimal? Okay. It should be easy. And while we're talking about it, everybody knows how to do it. It's just... In the context of a problem, will you remember to make the switch? I hope so. Uh, Landon, how about 3.7%? What's that as a decimal? 0 0.037. Good. Keegan, how about 11% as a decimal? 0.11. Again, that... The problem with those isn't that it's difficult, it's just remembering to do it at all. It's usually the issue. For one of our formulas, there's an N in the formula. N represents the number of times per year that an investment is compounded. So most of these aren't hard as long as you remember what N stands for. So monthly, that would be 12. Yearly would be 1. N would be 1. Um, what else could we come up with? Semi -quarterly. Quarterly. That sounds fancy. We won't do semi-annually because no one can ever remember if that's twice per year or every other year, me included. <laughs> right? Semi-annual versus biannual. I think biannual is every two years. Semi is twice a year. Mm -hmm. But is it we won't do that because I always get it confused. So. What about quarterly, though? What would N be for quarterly? Four. four. Four, right? Four quarters in a dollar, four quarters in a football game, four quarters in a year. Here's the four problems. Uh, I guess part of the trick is two of them involve interest rates. One of them is, has an N in it, so that's if you're compounded monthly, yearly, daily, weekly, quarterly, semi-annually, whatever, 
that's the in formula. Continuous is this pert formula. So con continuous is the key word that you're looking for. If you see the word continuous, you know it's the formula with e in it. And when e, is the same e is the same e that it was on the quiz and all the other times you've had e. 2.7, whatever. But it's a button on the calculator. So even if you don't remember what it is, hit the button on the calculator. It'll tell you what it is. Uh, all other principal rate amount problems. Um, the plus and the minus, I mean, I think this is obvious, but the plus is if it's growth, the minus is if it's decay. But the formula we give you will have both. You'll have to pick the formula and then pick whether it's plus or minus. Most people, if they're thinking at all, they don't miss that one. If they're just not, if their brain's just not turned on, they'll like do both and give me two answers. Like, wait, it said it was growing by 2%, so pick the plus. Or it was decaying by 2%, whatever. So as long as your brain is engaged, that picking the right one is not difficult. Jason? So on the question, like, if I went into it, it says like compound and one thing, then uh, compound and like, like, is it always going to say like what formula to use, like compound and then continuous interest? So it won't. It's a good question. It's not going to tell you explicitly which formula to use. Yeah. But you'll use the words in the problem to know which formula to use. Okay. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Because that, that is a good question. Like, how do I know which one to use? Especially among those two, because they're mm -hmm. pretty similar. Half-life problem is really easy to know which one to use. Because, well, why do you think? How, do you, how are you going to pick out? There's a half in the half-life problem. Right? 0. 0.5 is a half. So if it's a half-life problem, use the formula that's got a half in it. That one's not too bad. The trick with the half-life one is the H thing. This represents the given half-life of something. That doesn't really explain what half-life is, though. So you talk about this in chemistry a little bit. The half-life is... Uh, the time required to decay by half. So carbon dating uses half-life because I think it takes 12,000 years for carbon to be cut in half. So if they look at something and there's one gram of carbon and they think, wow, this, this thing should have two grams of carbon. Well, that means it been dead for 12,000 years. So that's half-life, that's real-world use of half-life, is carbon dating stuff. All right, let's do some problems and address some of these questions that you guys have. $5,000 is invested in an account which pays 3% interest, compounded monthly. What is the value of the account in 10 years? So job one is to pick the correct formula. The first one. How did you know it was the first one? Yeah, the monthly was kind of the giveaway. N equals 12, so I need to pick the formula that's got N in it. In fact, now we need to figure out the rest of these uh, variables. Lots of variables, um, so we got to figure out who's what here. 5,000. Is that the P, the A, the R, the N, the T? P. That's the P. That's the pre. That's what we started with. In fact, let's, let's go through the formula. What's A? What's A going to equal? Yeah. yeah, we don't know. That's what we're looking for. That's, that's our variable. What's R? 3%. So 3% is not wrong, but when we go to the calculator, we need to use 0 0.03. Uh, we already said n was 12. How about t? 10 years. So t is 10. So let's plug in all those pieces. You can go grab a calculator. In fact, if you grab a calculator, you use your own if you got one. If you need to go get one of mine, get one of mine. 
because part of calculator usage is making sure you know where all the buttons are and how to put them in and parentheses and fractions and all that stuff. So 5,000, 1 plus 0 0.03 over 12 to the 12 times 10. So I, I need to see that. Like when you're showing your work, I need to see that. Now the next step is going to be the answer because let's see, find my calculator here. So five thousand, especially under the screen, you can't tell that it's my phone. Let's see how thick it is, I guess. Five thousand times. One plus, um, some people love the fraction bar. Other people are like, come on, I don't need the fraction when it's that simple. 0 0.03 divided by 12. But if you want the fraction bar, use the fraction bar. Raised to the 12 times 10. And the nice thing about word problems, I admit there's not a whole lot of nice things about them. But the nice thing about them is that usually you can tell if your answer makes sense. Right? If I invest $5,000 for 10 years, I mean, I'm not a financial expert. I don't know how much money I'm supposed to have, but 6700 seems reasonable. Right? If you end up with $600,000, like, wait a minute, that doesn't, that doesn't seem quite right. If you end up with negative 32, definitely something went wrong. So, you know, I don't know for sure that that's right, but it sure seems reasonable. So there's a, at least the reasonable check. Um, and that way, if you did something dumb on the, on the calculator, like maybe you put a minus sign in there, see what happens if we did that. Well, hopefully you would know that 3,700 was wrong, right? If you invest $5,000 and 10 years later you have $3,700, that was a very poor investment. So again, you can you can check your answer and see that they make sense. Question. For our answer to be counted right, do we need to have the A equals and the dollar sign and all that? Or? Generally speaking, yes. But since it's probably going to be multiple choice, um, it's not like I'm going to have one with the dollar sign and one without the dollar sign. That would be that would be. Good. So I don't need to see all of that. Like some of you would, would kind of just label it as you go. You start reading the question. You're like, oh, there's the pre, there's the R, there's N. That would be okay. Again, it's going to be a multiple choice question. So number two, how much money was invested at 2.45% interest, compounded continuously, if the value of the investment is worth 2,000 in nine years? First question is, which formula are we using? The one with the E in it. How did you know that? What was the giveaway? Continuously. That's the giveaway that this is the A equals P E to the R T. So I need to find, I need to know, or at least know that I'm looking for, a, P, R, and T. So what's the A, or is that what I'm looking for? It's what we have. So this is like backwards from the previous problem. Now we know that the after, the result, is $2,000. What's the P? We don't know. How much money was invested? So like find P, that's what we're looking for. R is 2.45%. So two decimals, 0 0.0245. T is nine years. So let's fill in what we know. 2,000 P E to the 0 0.0245 times nine. So this one's not quite as straightforward as the last one. What do I do to get P by itself? Let's 
let's divide by e to all of that stuff. 2,000 divided by e to the 0 0.0245 times 9. And that's just the calculator concern now. Um, for you guys that do like the fraction bar, alpha F1, alpha Y equals is the numerator over the denominator. So if that, if you like that. Uh, on the E button, there's two E buttons. Either of them work. One of them comes with a built-in exponent. So the one with natural log is e to the, the one above division is just e. Either one works, but most of the time with e, you're doing e raised to a power. So you save a little bit of time if you do e raised to a power. It's the same e, it's just most of the time is e to a power, so they sort of built that into the calculator. Oh, 1604.24. So if we invest $1,600, nine years later, we're at $2,000. It's not much growth in our money, but 2.45% is not much of an interest rate. So hopefully your investments do better than that. But if it's in a savings account or checking account, it'll do worse than that. So, Number three, how much time? Ooh, so what are we looking for on this one? Time. How much time will it take for a $3,000 investment to double if it compounds every six months? Huh, there's our, is that biannual or semi-annual? I don't know. They just told me every six months at a rate of 0.085. Uh, what's n equal to in this one? If it compounds every six months, two. two. n is how many times per year, so two. You know we're looking for time. What's the, what's the, the pre and the after? Pre is 3,000, after is 6,000. Yeah, pre is 3,000. And they don't explicitly give you the after. They get tricky with double, but I can double. I can do that. So 6,000 equals 3,000. Now I'm shortcutting here and going straight to the formula and plugging in on the fly. 1 plus 0 0.085 over 2. So compounds narrowed it down every six months, man, it wasn't continuously. So the number two with compound continuously just because it has continuously needs to be used as a compound. Right. The, the word continuously is the giveaway to use the continuous formula. It will say continuously if it wants you to use that formula. If it doesn't say continuously, don't use that formula. All right. This one's not straightforward calculator. This one takes a little bit of, of work here. Um, what do you want to do first? I want to I want to get I, I will L in both sides, but I think we should first divide by 3000. Because that'll make life a lot easier. And then when I natural log both sides, why am I natural logging both sides? What's that accomplish for me? Yeah, it gets that t out of the exponent and down as a coefficient. So natural log both sides, and I took that 2t out of the exponent. That's why I natural log, to get it out of the exponent and down front. So the right is looking a little bit weird here. I've got 2 times t times natural log of all that stuff. Uh, divide by 2. Yes, but I want to divide by more than that. I want to divide by all of that stuff. 
right? I want t to be left. So I'm going to divide by 2 and by natural log 1 plus 0.085 over 2. So that's going to be a fun uh, calculator exercise in a minute. Natural log button. 7 p.m. The 2 p.m. matinee on the 6th.